Hey everyone, I figured it was about time to give everyone a tour of the instrument panel of my RV-10. Um, I'm, my instrument panel is based around the G3X touch system and obviously I've got uh, three of those. Uh, it's set up as a PFD, an MFD, and an MFD2. So that's primary flight display, multifunction display, and a secondary multifunction display that is set up to split screen to allow the co-pilot to have full flight instruments. Um, my IFR navigator is a GTN650. Um, otherwise, well, including that, uh, pretty much everything top to bottom is Garmin here. Uh, the system is installed in an Aerosport Products 310 symmetrical panel. It's a carbon, beautiful carbon fiber panel from Aerosport Products. Um, and that also utilizes the Aerosport Products console center quadrant. Um, I'm not sure what the official name of that is, but it's the uh, engine quadrant mounted right in the center console down here. Uh, that allows you to move the engine controls from the standard location up here uh, down here, allowing you more room for avionics and whatnot. Um, real high level from left to right, um, we'll, we'll go into each of these sections a little more in depth. but. Uh, Starting left, I've got a little kind of e-panel for my some of the critical uh, emergency style switches and my electronic ignitions. Um, that's for the dual. Uh, that's the uh, power for the dual light speed electronic ignitions that I run. Uh, my primary flight display. My kind of the main switches that I actually use every flight. Um, ignition switch, flap switch. We've got the center stack with an MFD. Uh, GTN650 for an IFR navigator, a Garmin uh, GMA245 audio panel, and a Garmin GMC307 autopilot control panel. Um, I've got an and air fuel selector, and again, that Aerosport center quadrant. Over on the right, I've got an MFD2 um, set up to allow a co pilot to have full flight controls or go full screen map. I've got the ELT remote panel and a secondary um, switch panel that allows control of overhead air, heat, um, the 12 volt power, and a, a USB power slot. Um, up above, I have an AOA mount, an AOA display, an angle of attack display mounted on the glare shield. And then um, up above all that, you can't see it right now, but again, we'll, we'll cover everything as I've got my lighting switch panel. All right, so a little more in-depth on the left side here. Um, again, this is that uh, e-panel. Uh, I included a, an MFD mode switch that allows me to put the MFD into a re reversionary mode, um, which forces the MFD to have the full flight displays. Um, the system will automatically do that if it senses a problem with the PFD, but uh, I kind of like to have the ability to, you know, force that MFD to show me that uh, those flight instruments. Um, I've got an alternate static source um, that will bypass the static ports on the side of the plane and use cabin pressure. It's uh, you know, in case you get some um, accidental icing, things like that. And then I've got my alternator switch with an off, a primary position, and then all the way up turns on the backup alternator. And that's set up so that you can't have uh, both the backup and the primary on at the same time. Uh, the vertical power system in this plane that functions as the electronic circuit breaker and power management also has that feature. This is just you know, another level of uh, redundancy. Below that, I've got my electronic ignition power, um, which is a pullable breaker for both ignition one and ignition two, um, as well as the warning lights that will show me if one of the ignitions is not working or, or whatnot. Um, those lights are actually pretty critical. With these electronic ignitions, the engine runs so smooth on just one ignition running that you could theoretically be flying along, have one of your ignitions conk out on you and you wouldn't even know. So those, uh, those lights will obviously tell me if there's an issue there. Um, next to that, I've got an, LE, or an LCD display of the voltage of the ignition backup battery. So I've got a dedicated um, TCW IBBS backup battery that feeds one of my ignitions and that will allow me to wear to keep flying if every other bit of electronics in this plane dies. 
So if the primary alternator dies, the secondary alternator dies, and the ship's battery dies, I still have that um, backup battery just to keep the uh, one of the ignitions running. And again, that'll keep it running smoothly, and I've got more than enough power in that for a couple hours of flying. You know, worst case scenario to get me to some uh, clear weather to where I can land just looking out the window. Um, I do have a battery test button, so this display is wired up to where if you're running in a, a normal mode, if you're uh, just flying along, this, this is off if everything is good. Uh, the only time this will come on is if something happens electrically to where one of the ignitions is actually running off of that battery. So that's actually kind of a, uh, the, the fact that that display comes on, that's a warning to me that um, my ignition, at least one of them, is running off the backup battery and not off a of ship's power. So that, that serves two purposes. Um, the last switch is a, a CO detector test. Um, and pushing and holding that, I should get the CO level pop up on my screen and you'll also get an audio alert uh, warning you to uh, high carbon dioxide levels. Um, the PFD, uh, this is how I have it set up the majority of the time. Um, again, Garmin G3X Touch. This is in full screen PFD mode. I do have the option to split screen it to you know, have what other secondary function I want on the second half. So there's a flight plan page um, you could go into, you know, half screen traffic and you can pull up, you know, maps. Pretty much anything you can do on the MFD, you can do all right through this screen here. Um, I also have my radios are remote controllable through the PFD. Um, and that allows me to tune my COM1, which is my GTN. 650 or my COM2, which is a uh, one of the Garmin remote radios. I, I don't rem recall the uh, number off the top of my head, but uh, so I can tune everything right through here. Uh, so including you know frequency lookups, uh, flip flop, all that fun stuff. Um, I also have my remote transponder is controlled through here. And also, I am able to control my Garmin GMA245 audio panel through the PFD. I do have the physical buttons on the audio panel. Um, however, you can do, it's a little easier to change some of the advanced features through the touchscreen, uh, particularly uh, music distribution. So I can send uh, one music source to the pilot, another music source to the co-pilot, a different music source to the rear passengers and it's just as easy as choosing one of the three audio inputs you have for each one and then turning it on or off. Um, it's also quick and easy to do your ATC playback so it's got a recorder built in you can play black the last one and then pop to previous messages. I'm just sitting in a hanger here so I don't have a lot right now. So again uh, kind of a lot of control right here you don't have to go to a lot of the other stuff. I've got, down below, I've got my ignition switch. I did run a keyed ignition switch. Um, the reason I did that versus just uh, toggle switches for my ignitions is I have lockable fuel caps on my plane. And I wanted to make sure that I couldn't take off and fly somewhere without having the key to my fuel caps with me. So since my fuel cap key and my ignition key are on the same keychain, I cannot start the plane without that fuel uh, fuel cap key. So <laughs> that's actually the biggest reason I'm running that. Um, then my main power switch, I've got my battery master which turns on the the VPX and all the other things that are running directly off the main bus. I've got an avionics auxiliary battery. Um, that's a second TCW IBBS uh, battery that powers some, uh, some of the like just the bare bones absolute critical flight systems just to kind of to keep the plane upright and flying where you want to go. Uh, so again with that switch off I could turn off everything, I could disconnect the battery uh, engine off and I would still have my MFD running, my ADHARS which is my, my gyros and my air, 
air data, all that stuff. Uh, my engine analyzer so I can you know, make sure everything's running well with the engine. And then the fourth thing that I power off that is actually my autopilot control panel. Um, now the autopilot servos aren't charged off or aren't powered off that backup, but the idea is that since the the well, the idea is that the autopilot control panel allows you to have a flight director on your screen. So if I if I do dial something in and tell it to fly, you know, a GPS to this location and this procedure, whatnot, uh, I'll at least get that flight director. So I, you know, basically become, you know, as Stein from Stein Air likes to say, the meat servo in the airplane. So I just make sure the command bars are in the flight director and I'm flying the plane like it's telling me to. It's one less thing to focus on in an emergency as you're troubleshooting, trying to get things back up and running. Um, again, the ignition auxiliary battery for the backup power there. Uh, I've got the avionics master switch. This switch actually turns pretty much everything in the plane on for me that I don't have a, a dedicated switch for. Um, I do have cowl flaps installed in the plane and that's from those are from anti-splat arrow. They're controlled here. Um, I've got an oil cooler damper from TCW. So that's a butterfly valve. I can dial how much air I let into my oil cooler, which is very handy in the Minnesota winter. I basically fly with that pretty much closed for the winter and it everything works well. The engine will warm up a little bit better and it also doesn't, uh, it, it, it allows the engine to run at uh, proper operating temperatures. Uh, my pedo heat switch, uh, that controls a regulated Garmin um, angle of attack slash pedo. Um, and then I have a switch called Copilot Disco. That when that switch is, is up, it disconnects all of the uh, switches uh, on the co-pilot stick. So if I have someone who's not a pilot um, or a kid, I, I flip that switch up and I don't have to worry about them accidentally transmitting or disconnecting autopilot or trimming or anything like that. And then finally we've got the, the flap switch. Um, just below I've got two push poles. One is for my alternate air and then the second is for parking brake. Okay, now we got the center stack. Um, up on top, we've got the uh, Garmin angle of attack display. Um, that shows you how much, you know, how close to a stall you are. This will tell you, you know, as you start getting closer and closer and closer to a stall, and then it'll start beeping. Um, below that, I've got the MFD. This is where I actually do most of the interfacing with the system as I'm flying, looking up maps, changing flight plans, I tend to actually do that through the MFD because that's a, a nice big screen that allows you to, you know, look at your, look at your, your maps, your charts, um, a nice waypoint. I use this screen all the time as I'm coming into the airports. You can just quickly pull up all the information you need to know about the airport, airport you're landing on. Um, nice big display of your flight plan. Um, weather, I display weather I've got XM and uh, ADSB in this plane. Currently, I don't have the XM subscription activated, but I do pull uh, ADSB traffic and weather and display it on both of these two screens here. Um, got uh, terrain, the traffic page again from the uh, GDL 39R ADSB unit. Uh, this is my Sirius XM music. You know, as I start traveling more, I might see if I can't do a month-to-month -month plan on that. You know, some of those longer trips, it is nice to have some music. Uh, my vertical power page. This is a, a great system that I'm very happy with. It allows me to see what is going on with every single circuit in the plane real time. So over here, I can see that my main and alternate, or my backup uh, alternators are off. My vertical power system is currently drawing seven amps and my battery is at 12.8 volts. And then on the right here, I can see every single circuit and what it's drawing at that moment. So my GTN is currently drawing 2.7 amps. Uh, my COM2 is 0.4 amps, you know, and then within here you can turn things on and off. It's a, it's a very nice, very nice system. I've been, I've been very happy with it. I also get a, uh, another place to control my flaps and my trim right through here because uh, all of my flap control, my trim and flap controls go through the vertical power 
uh, if I have a switch malfunction with the flaps or the trim switch, I can I still have another place to where I can control everything through here. Um, you can also adjust the wigwag of my lights um, through here so I can tell it to stay on, stop wigwagging, or just go to the auto wigwag, which is a nice feature. Once I get above 80 knots, they'll, they'll wigwag back and forth below 80 knots, turning, uh, you know, base. I, that's when I try to get down to 80 knots. They'll go solid and I'll be able to see the runway well as I'm landing. Uh, but again, I have another control here to, you know, force them to stay steady on. Um, your generic info page and your engine page um, showing, you know, all of your CHTs, EGTs, your electrical, um, all of your fuel. You've got a dedicated fuel calculator page. Um, so, and you can quickly get to a lot of these screens like that engine page if you just touch the engine section takes you right there to the last page you were on. Um, I've got a, a data bar that's fully customizable up on top with you know, some of the things that I like to have as I'm flying around and that changes. I'm still kind of getting that dialed into what I what I really like up there. So right now I currently have the, uh, the altimeter as reported by ADSB. My estimated time en route to my destination, the time at which I will arrive at my destination in local time, the time until I reach the vertical navigation point. So, you know, when you start descending, that's actually a really useful one as I'm flying with the kids. Because if, uh, if EJ's, you know, getting a little cranky in his seat, we'll let him up so he can look out the window. And, and Colleen knows that once we, you know, start heading down that he should be buckled in. So if she asks, you know, how long do we start looking down or heading down, she can just glance there. Um, I've got economy, miles per gallon, endurance. So the amount of time that I can fly on the fuel left and fuel over destination, so that's that's a, a calculator saying how much fuel will I have when I get where I'm going, and then current uh, gallons of fuel remaining. And again, those are all customizable, that's just what I have right now. Below that, I've got the GTN 650. Uh, this is my certified IFR navigator. This is required for IFR flight. Um, I basically only do a nav database subscription on this, and all I do is run my IFR flight plans in here. Let's try that. So I'll uh, input my IFR flight plans and those will automatically feed up to here. So I'm choosing that my flight plan is based off the external GPS, which is down here. So all the editing now has to be done here because again, this is the FAA certified source. So again, that's also my COM1. Um, I could control it right here, dial in the frequencies, whatnot, but it's just easier to do all that right from my PFD. Below that, I've got my Garmin GMA245 audio panel. I really like this audio panel. Um, for one, the, the interface through the touchscreen is very handy, but I actually found the thing that I like the absolute best on this is these dual concentric knobs. So with this inner knob, I can adjust just the pilot's uh, intercom audio, so the, uh, the volume of everyone in the plane talking with each other. And then this bigger outer knob, I can control my music, just my music. So as we're flying along, um, even, with, even when I'm on with ATC, um, I may have uh, XM or my iPhone audio on in the background, you know, at a level to where I can still hear ATC, but if I if I get a call where I need to respond and really fully focus, I can just quickly flip that all the way down. It kills that music audio. I can, you know, communicate as needed and then turn it back up. Uh, the co-pilot also has their own controls for those exact same functions. Uh, so they can just, without having to go into the touch screens or anything like that, they can control you know, if they want their music up a little bit or down a little bit, um, same with the intercom volume. Uh, the, those same controls are available for the rear passengers, however, that does have to be done through the touch screen. Um, yeah, so I can pair, I also, I can pair, my phone is paired through here, um, through Bluetooth, so I can do full Bluetooth audio, I can actually control, you know, play, pause, next, skip, whatnot, answer phone calls, not that you should be talking on the phone as you're flying, but you know, on the ground maybe 
um, that can all be done through this and the touchscreen. So very, very happy with that audio panel. <clears throat> and then below that we've got the GMC 307 autopilot controller. Um, originally I had the 305 autopilot controller, which is basically the same. 307 just gives dedicated knobs for your heading and your, your altitude select. Um, with the 305, those are controllable through the, the PFD. And e even with this one, I can control those through the PFD, but it is very nice, you know, being able to, to dial in your heading, um, your altitude pre-select, or synchronize those right through there. Um, from this panel, you can control the mode that the autopilot is in, whether you're in approach mode, uh, nav mode, so feeding off of whatever the nav source is, GPS or VOR, and, or heading mode, so it just goes off of magnetic heading. Um, you got your autopilot actually on. The flight director, you can, you can, again, you can have that on even if the autopilot isn't functioning, but if you want that to go away, you can turn it off there. Uh, I've got a button for a yaw damper, which is a third autopilot servo on the rudder that's uh, uh, supposed to be able to take some of the, the tail wag out of the plane. I don't have that currently. Uh, someday I might add that. I, I would like that. Uh, and then you have this nice blue level button. So even if the autopilot is off, if, if you get into some sort of situation where you just say fly straight and level, I don't want to think about it, you just press that button, it will fly straight and level, um, holding uh, attitude and heading. Um, that's also really useful if uh, you just want to get some stuff set up as you're taking off from an airport. You can you know, get up and get flying, hit that level button, get everything configured, and then actually choose the uh, autopilot mode you want. Um, you've got uh, you know your up-down selector and then the vertical mode stuff. So this is just your altitude mode, vertical, vertical speed mode, uh, vertical nav mode, and indicated approach. I'm sorry, indicated airspeed mode. So you can do a, a specific airspeed climb. Say you want to climb at whatever speed it is at you know, 135 knots. You know, hold that airspeed and climb as high, fast as you can with that airspeed. Or uh, vertical speed, you could say climb 500 feet per minute, and you know the plane might might do 130 knots or 120 knots. It's just it's going to hold that. Um, vertical nav is what you can choose when you're when you want to fly some sort of uh, uh, vertical navigation plan from the from the G3X system. So just even approaching an airport from cruise, uh, this is this will default to say um, <clears throat> uh, let's see here. Basically, that allows me to it allows the system to tell me when to start descending to maintain a certain descent profile to whatever waypoint you're going. So I've got the system set up to automatically tell me when I need to start descending to maintain a 600 foot per minute descent that will take me to basically pattern altitude two miles before an airport. So I'm flying along at altitude. Once I get to the point where I need to start heading down, the system will alert me that I'm getting close to that. Um, I choose the VNAV button down here and the autopilot will just fly that, that vertical path right down to the airport. Um, Great feature. I, I use that pretty much every flight. Co-pilot side, we've got uh, up on the top again. We've got the uh, ACK remote ELT switch. I can test the ELT or remotely activate it. The MFD2 um, Garmin G3X Touch over here. I've got that set up so that because it's an MFD, it can do the full screen map. Um, that's nice for co-pilots that want to you know look ahead at the the weather or kind of see what's what's around you know help help navigate and you know look at interesting stuff or if the co-pilot actually wants to fly I've got it set up so that the split screen mode brings up the PFD flight control so they've got a the the split screen version of the the flight instruments that I have over here so you know that I use that a lot when I'm you know showing other people the plane and what it's like to fly it so that that's been really good there otherwise Pretty much everything you can do on the first two screens, you can do from this screen. Um, below that, I've got controls for the uh, heater and vent. Uh, I've got uh, one knob that adjusts the, uh, I've got a NACA vent valve from Aerosport, so I can control how much air comes into the overhead. Um, I've got heat controls for the front heat, so I can turn the heat um, up and down. So 
uh, I've got a servo that actually runs the push-pull cable from the uh, the heat valve. So this amount this adjusts how much heat comes to the front, and then I also have a, a splitter, so I can choose for the passenger to get more heat or the pilot to get more heat, because. Um, my wife is a freeze baby and I'm not, that comes in handy. Uh, and then I have uh, a rear heat override control. Um, this allows me to say I want the rear to control the heat themselves with knobs back there or the front seat to control that through here. Again, that's nice with kids. You can just make it so that the knobs back there don't work and you can, you can choose the, the heat that they get. Interestingly enough, the, the heat in the RV10, the rear heat, when you turn that on, it's right under the butts of the, the front passengers. So turning that rear heat on is actually like a nice uh, seat warmer. Next to that, we've got the aux 12 volt switch that enables all of the USB power slots. Um, and then next to that is a USB power slot. All right, so this is my overhead switch panel. Um, this is something I custom did to um, work with the Aerosport overhead carbon fiber overhead panel. This is a, it's a fiberglass piece that I made and it houses all of my lighting controls. Um, so on the top I can control my panel backlights. Uh, I'm not sure how well that shows up on the video but uh, all of my engraved, uh, engraved labels are backlit with uh, blue LEDs so I can control the amount there. Um, I can adjust my overhead lights. Um, I can adjust the uh, eyeball lights in the rear from here, so they can turn them on and off. But uh, I can, this this will control how bright they actually get, or you know I can just force them to be off. And then I have uh, footwell lights, so red LED lights that um, that illuminate the footwells. Below that, I've got uh, the nav lights, strobe lights, landing lights, taxi lights, um, and then a dome override. Uh, nav lights, strobe lights, that's pretty self-explanatory. The landing lights I talked about before, I've got uh, a pair of Baja Design squadrons, um, one in each um, leading edge, and when those are on, they're solid below 80 knots, um, and they wigwag above, um, above 80 knots. Uh, I pretty much fly with them on most of the time, uh, just, just a little bit more visibility to other planes. Uh, my taxi lights are in the wingtips in the stock landing light location. Um, I purchased the, the the Vans landing light kit that goes in the wingtips, and I put some uh, LED lights in there. So those are kind of a lower intensity light for taxiing around when I don't want to blind people with my Bajas. And then the dome override is just a, a momentary switch that controls the uh, lighting system that activates when a door is open, just like a car. So if I open a door in the plane, the overhead lights come on. That works just fantastic, but if I ever land someplace at night and I want a taxi with the door open because it's hot or for whatever reason, I don't necessarily want the lights on at that time. So if I if I flip that, that'll kill those overhead lights until all of the doors are shut again, and then when one of them opens again, the system will reset and turn back on. Um, my overhead lights are these great panel lights um, from uh, playing around. I'm not sure that they make them anymore, but if they do, I highly recommend them. Um, and then I've got some AVO eyeball lights. These are the touch sensitive lights. Um, I, I'm not I'm not real thrilled with them. They're they're okay. But uh, yep, I'm not going to take them out. Um, let's see. And then other than that, we've got uh, Rosen sun visors. Um, I had to custom cut these down because of my uh, light switch panel. It's it's interesting every time you make a, a change to the stock design, you so many things down the road need to be modified that you don't even think of. So uh, it ends up working okay, but uh, just barely. I just kind of got lucky that uh, this bar happened to be that length and I can you know still run these rows and visors with my panel. And then to wrap up the tour of the panel, um, we've got the sticks. Uh, these grips are from Infinity Aerospace. I've got a lot of functions on here. We'll, we'll talk about that in a second. Uh, again, I've got that Aerosport uh, throttle quadrant here. I'm just thrilled with the location because as you're flying along, 
it's just a perfectly natural place to rest your hand and you have a lot of control because your whole arm is braced on this uh, pad here so you can really adjust things where you want and it's just it's just very very comfortable um, and then again I've got the and air fuel selector so that's a, a real nice unit there uh, as for controls on my infinity sticks um, the pinky button is my fuel pump the thumb button here is my autopilot disconnect or control wheel steering uh, depending on if you just tap it or push and hold uh, this is my starter button uh, that is protected by the VPX so that once the engine is running I think it's above a, a couple hundred rpm the starter circuit is deactivated so once the plane is running you can't you know accidentally engage the starter it just it won't do anything um, I've got trim for aileron and elevator uh, the trigger is the push to talk and then this switch here is uh, a remote for both flip-flopping my COM1. So uh, let's see here. Again, this switch is for flip-flopping my COM1. If I push up, you can see my COM1 flips from standby to uh, flips the standby into the active and vice versa. If I pull down on that switch, it changes which radio that I'm transmitting on. So if I pull down, right now I'm on COM1, you can see that my mic right here shows a one and the COM1 mic here is lit up. If I pull down, now my COM2 mic is active. Uh, that's real useful as your, uh, you know, I've noticed if you're flying with other planes um, and you wanna also talk to traffic, you can leave your air to air on COM2 and then dial up your, you know, your CTAF or ATC or whoever else you're talking. You can just quickly flip between the two of them. Um, the other thing that this can be useful for is you can preload basically four frequencies without having to. I'll take that. You can preload three frequencies without having to touch anything other than the stick. So if you're on approach and you're talking to, um, you know, ATC. You could have them active, and then you could have tower on your standby. So as they switch you over, you can push up, and that'll put tower active. And then if you had COM2 dialed in for ground, you pull down, now you're talking to COM2 on ground. So I can go from ATC to tower to ground, all without having to take my hand off the stick, um, which, which can come in handy. I mean, it's not... It's not like it's a lot of work to reach all the way up here or all the way up here, but just one more convenience. So that's my panel. Um, if anyone has any questions or if can think of anything that I missed or would like more details about um, any of the specific functions or how I fly it, feel free to, to comment below. Also, you know, if you want to subscribe, if you like these videos, please hit that subscribe button and that thumbs up button. That does help us with the channel and spreading the word about what these experimental planes can actually be like. Thanks for watching.